All right. This is going to be a demo of how to set up a single SIG wallet using Spectre Desktop and Seed Signer. And we're also going to go ahead and do a, a test deposit into the wallet and then a test spend to make sure everything's working okay. This is not scripted, so uh, I'm still figuring out the best way to do these videos. I'm sure there'll be some awkwardness, but we'll work through it. All right. So the first thing I need to do is to input my private key into Seed Signer so that I can import that X, XPUB or extended public key into Spectre Desktop. Before I do that, I'm actually going to go into the settings and make sure we're set up correctly for this single SIG testnet Spectre Desktop wallet. So navigate to settings. I should also note, I'm using an advanced version of Seed Signer that's going to come out over the next few days. Uh, some of the menu items may be a little bit different, or the workflows may be different, but the basic concepts are going to be very much uh, so the same. Very much the same, rather, so um, just be aware of that. New feature is that we're going to prompt for wallets during the workflows in future versions, but for now, I'm going to set to Spectre Desktop. On our script policy, I'm changing from multi-sig, uh, native SegWit to single SIG, native SegWit, and we of course are gonna change the network from mainnet to testnet. So I have all of that set up. On previous versions of Seed Signer to save a seed, you have to go into the Seed Tools menu to do that. So that's the workflow that we're going to uh, reproduce for this video. So I select Seed Tools and Temp Seed Storage. I'm going to use the first seed slot and then I have three options here. You can absolutely type in uh, 12 words or a 24 word seed on seed signer, but I'm going to use a seed QR code that I demonstrated uh, generating in a previous video to input this seed into seed signer. So on seed signer, what I will do is move down to scan a seed QR code. Select that, the live preview feature comes up and I'm going to square that up. As you can see, it identifies what's been inputted as a valid seed. I go right to continue and it's highly unlikely that the QR code would import a valid seed if there was an error in it and it would not match um, your seed. But I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball these two lists to make sure they match, which they do. So if I click right, that seed's been now saved uh, on Seed Signer. And now what I need to do is generate an extended public key with Seed Signer that I can import into Spectre. So again, I'll go back out to main, but I'm going to remain in that Seed Tools menu and I'll move down to XPUB from Seed. Uh, seed Center recognizes that I have a seed saved, so it's gonna ask me if I wanna use a saved seed. Of course, we just have that one in slot one. Select that, it again lets me review uh, the words that comprise that seed. And then it's gonna give me some information about the extended public key here. Um, the fingerprint of the parent, the derivation path, and my Mac is bugging me with updates. It's going to give you the master fingerprint, the derivation, and then it'll give you the first, it looks like six or seven, and then the last, maybe 10 of that uh, extended public key information. What you can also use Seed Signer, that's uh, another compelling use case, is there's a particular attack where um, wallets could be programmed to export an XPUB that's not consistent with private key details or the, the seed. This is a little bit of a tangent here, but you can also use Seed Signer to verify the extended public keys that your other hardware wallets are producing. Um, but back to our workflow. I'm gonna go right to continue. It's gonna give me an animated QR that represents our extended public key. I'm gonna set that aside for a second, and now we're gonna do our work in Spectre. In Spectre, I'm gonna add a new device. You can either search for Seed Signer or just scroll down and find it. I'm going to name this test key one. 
And then all I need to do is scroll down a little bit and there's gonna be a button that says scan QR code. I'm gonna click that and then I'm going to hold this animated QR code up to the laptop's webcam so that it can be scanned in. All right, extended public key's been scanned in. Spectre's recognized it as a single SIG uh, or a single, single uh, signature configuration. So beyond that, all I need to do is press continue. And now we have a new device that's been added in Spectre under our devices off to the side. Don't want to add any more devices. So I'm gonna exit that. And then I'm gonna go over here to the right again and select add new wallet. Here, like we said before, we're gonna do a single key wallet and we can select that key or that extended public key that we just uh, inputted into Spectre as a device. I'm gonna accept the defaults and I'm going to create the wallet. Oh, forgot to give it a name. Let's just call it test single sig wallet. Create wallet. New wallet created successfully. It's gonna be a good idea to save the descriptor for the wallet. I'm not gonna go through that process right now, but just be aware you, sh you should save that. It's a PDF that you can print. It doesn't contain any secret information, um, so you could feel comfortable storing it at your house, but that's what you're gonna to need to restore this wallet if for some reason it were to get deleted from Spectre, you'd want to re recreate it on another device. So I continue from there. Now we have our test wallet. And I would like to go ahead and put some testnet coins in this. So I'm going to click to copy that address. And I already have a testnet faucet queued up in the background here. So this is, uh, you can see the URL. I'll try to remember to put it into the notes for this video but I'm going to paste that testnet address and we're going to ask it to send us 0 0.0001 testnet bitcoins. Need to prove that I'm a human. Hopefully I can pull that off. All right, it's verified that it's sent coins to our address ending in 3UE2L. So I'm gonna switch back to Spectre, 3UE2L, so it copied correctly. Our testnet coins are on the way. I'll probably pause this video and wait for those to confirm in and then we'll resume. All right, our transactions come through we can see the 0 0.0001 Bitcoins have come through and we have one confirmation behind that transaction. So we're ready to start continuing with our little experiment here. I'm gonna pull Seed Signer back up. Seed Signer is still displaying the uh, animated QR codes associated with that extended public key. To exit this screen, I'm just gonna click to the right and it's gonna pop me back to uh, the main menu there. So now, now that I have my coins, I'm gonna go ahead and um, give those coins back to the faucet. So if I switch back to the faucet, it says, send coins back when you don't need them anymore. That's exactly what we wanna do. And I am going to select the Bitcoin address that they have for returns. I'm gonna jump back to Spectre, click the send tab, I'm gonna paste that address that I just copied from the faucet into the Compose a Transaction interface. I'm gonna say just send back to faucet and we are going to, for this, we're just gonna send the max. So we're gonna send everything that we got back. Then I'm gonna click below, create unsigned transaction because this is a single signature wallet, we just have one signer that we need to sign with. And so let's go ahead and sign this. We're gonna say sign with test key one. 
And our only option with Seed Signer is to sign with QR codes. So I'm going to select that. And we're going to need to scan this QR code into Seed Signer. So back in the Seed Signer interface, I'm going to go to Scan QR. It's going to initialize the camera, try to square that up. It tells me it's a valid PSPT and it wants to know the seed phrase that we want to sign with. So I'm gonna go right to continue. It recognizes that we've saved the seed. We're gonna select yes to use that. And we'll pick seed slot one. We don't need a passphrase. I'm gonna save that for another demonstration video. Let's just review the words. And now it's gonna tell us about this transaction. So we have one input less the fee is the output that goes back to the uh, testnet faucet. It lets us verify the receiving address. It tells us that spend is going to be 9,889 satoshis. That's of course minus a fee. And that's from our original 0 0.0001 bitcoins that we're sending back. Everything looks okay there to me. So I'm going to write to continue. It signs the PSPT and then it creates another animated QR code that we're going to scan back into Spectre to transfer that partially signed Bitcoin transaction back into Spectre as a fully signed Bitcoin transaction. So, I'll pull this aside for a sec. I'm gonna click Scan Sign Transaction. Again, it brings up the webcam. I'm going to show, it happens pretty quickly. Um, what I did was held the animated QR code up to my webcam, it scanned in, there were like five or six frames, and now Spectre's recognized that the transaction is ready to broadcast. So we can say, okay, let's send the transaction. Meanwhile, our input transaction already has two confirmations and our outgoing transaction doesn't have any yet. So let's peek at the faucet and see if perhaps maybe it recognizes that a transaction has come in from the mempool. So I'm gonna refresh this website. We're not gonna send the form again. We are going to just refresh. And the faucet recognizes that this transaction has come from our IP address. So it highlights as green and it shows us that the 9,889 Satoshis that we sent back has been received. And I think that's all we've got for this demo. Hope it's been helpful. Um, to learn more about Seed Signer, just follow us on Twitter. You can join our Telegram group and uh, shoot me a DM, DM if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody.